Jeff here. Just kidding, that sucked. Hey all you cool cats and kittens out there. Jeff here from Big Cat Rat. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Carol Vaskins, lady's crazy. <laughs> Sorry for the sunglasses. We finally got some sun here in Michigan. Um, today, I'm gonna walk you guys through a uh, nice, simple, clean uh, generator installation. Not a lot of people know what they look like when they are actually installed, so I will give you guys kind of a real world uh, look as to what they do look like. This particular setup did get a 200 amp transfer switch linked up to a 16 kilowatt Generac Guardian generator. It is air cooled. Uh, this particular generator is ran on propane. Uh, so we'll walk through that, what it took to do that, the whole nine yards. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we do have our 200 amp transfer switch from Generac. Uh, this is going to be the whole home transfer switch. Uh, the customer did not want to opt for a essential circuit panel. Uh, majority of our installations here at Escon are a whole home, uh, whole home transfer switch unless the customer specifies otherwise. Get a little more bang for your buck. Uh, labor wise, it's actually a little more labor intensive to install an essential circuit panel versus a standard uh, transfer switch. So usually we opt for it. Um, I do want to note though, kind of a pro tip, if you guys are thinking about doing siding or renovating your home and getting a generator at the same time, you do want to have the generator or if nothing else, the transfer switch set before you do the rest of the siding, anything like that. Reason being is when we as installers, electricians, etc., go to do uh, installations, we end up having to kind of reroute some of the existing work. In this case, the customer does have some J channel uh, that he is going to have cleaned up, um, you know, with the siding, but just something to keep in mind. We don't want to add to your plate uh, as far as the installation goes. So this here is going to be the inside of the transfer switch. Uh, in this case, again, it is a 200 amp transfer switch. Uh, up top, you have your main uh, utility service disconnect, as it states, on off very simple very straightforward down here at this little slot there's actually a little lever that generac provides for you to be able to go from utility power to generator power manually again this is an automatic transfer switch so if you're out of town you're not home you're laying in bed whatever the situation is when the power goes out the sensors within the transfer switch sense voltage drop from the utility and automatically make that transfer over to run on generator power 100% automated, you don't have to do anything. But if it happens to get stuck, because sometimes things happen or whatever the case may be, there is a spot to manually crank that thing down into generator power. Once that happens, generator fires up almost instantaneously. And then usually the home is then powered up within 10 to 15 seconds once the switch has been made. So now we're gonna go through how the power is actually routed from the utility company into the transfer switch, and then from the transfer switch to the generator. Because again, the transfer switch is going to be the brains of the operation. This is what does all the thinking for you. You don't have to get up, you don't have to do anything. So from here, we have our utility service. Utility service comes in from the pole. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. Hopefully it worked. Um, so utility service in, we reroute it. Instead of going directly to your panel, you route the wires to go into the transfer switch. From the transfer switch, we then go into the house, into the back of the panel. Sometimes it's that easy, sometimes it's not. So now we have wiring that goes from the transfer switch down and over into the back of the generator, which you will see here in a second. All right, now let's talk about the gas end of the application. With this particular home, it is going to be a liquid propane home or an LP home. So we do have our existing LP regulator for the house and then a separate regulator for the generator itself. You do want two separate regulators when dealing with propane. Reason being is you don't want to pull fuel from the home to fuel the generator or from the generator to fuel the home. It ends up being a bad dynamic either way. Now, as you can see as well, we do have our gas lines buried all the way over to the generator. Why? It looks better. Yeah, it takes a little more work, 
but at the end of the day, it's a nice clean line straight through. We're not messing with uh, any surface mount conduit, kind of like this janky looking cable wire there or anything like that. Very simple, very clean, very straightforward. Okay, so now we come to the final step, the actual connections into the generator itself. Again, we do have our electrical wires coming underground from the transfer switch right behind me, over and up, flex line in to the back of the generator. Then we do have our gas line coming up, flex line in. Reason you want flex line or reason is required for flex line is this machine does vibrate quite a bit. Also, the ground does move up and down with frost here in Michigan. Always flex line connections, never have any issues. Okay, so that was kind of a brief, simple walkthrough of what a typical installation does look like. Uh, as we move along with this channel, we will be adding more and more videos just like this. Uh, again, this was a very straightforward installation, about as easy as it gets, relatively speaking, uh, but this isn't the norm. We have some that are very complicated, much like all you installers out there as well. Um, yeah, if you have any feedback, any questions, any concerns, comments, uh, do comment below, uh, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, etc. Again, Jeff here from Escon Group, signing out. Oh,